sitting here on the deck of uh, Jim Henson Productions in New York City on the fashionable Upper East Side with the fashion plate, Frank Oz, <laughs> film director, famous Muppeteer, longtime associate of Jim Henson. What was there about Jim Henson that made him so much different from all other people in the, in the world in which he worked? Well, you, you knew him too. I, I always knew Jim was a unique person. I just didn't know how important his uniqueness was to the world until after his death. But also, when you talk about Jim, it's not puppeteer. You're talking about the guy who performed, he directed, he, he, he also worked with the writers, he produced. He would be constantly editing, uh, performing, flying. Uh, and, and throughout that strength, he also had the strength of will and the strength of decency. He was amazing. You called him a unique individual. What were his uh, characteristics or the attributes that seemed to set him apart from others? His sense of decency and fairness in a business where you which is very, extremely competitive, is one thing. He would be extraordinarily patient. Extraordinary. I've seen him on sets where people do things wrong, and some other director would say, get him out of here. He would say, no, just give him a chance. He'll be OK. It's OK. He was very famous. Did he sort of ignore his fame? He was aware of it. He was pleased with it, because I think more than anything else, he was pleased because the fame could allow him to do more good things. But. Fame itself is very empty. It didn't mean much. Work was important to him. Fame is a pretty hollow thing. And he was very famous and still is very famous, of course. But it wasn't the fame, it was the work. That's all that matters is how good the work is. That's all that matters. Was Kermit Jim Henson? No. No, Kermit was not Jim Henson. Kermit was a facet of Jim Henson, exaggerated. like. The characters are facets of each of us. But Jim was an extremely complex person who was, on the other hand, quite simple. Kermit, in The Muppet Show, was kind of trying to keep these, this band of crazy people together. And Jim was trying to kind of keep these crazy people together in The Muppet uh, and the Jim Henson Productions. Ricky, have you been planting items about us in the gossip papers again? Um, well, what would make you think a thing like that? The photographer who was just here, he was from Tong Magazine. Oh. Uh -huh. Well, we have a tiny item. It was a cover story about us being secretly married. It's a slight exaggeration. That's a bold-faced lie, Piggy. Most people who are artists disdain or disparage the commercial side of life. Money is beneath them. They just want to create and be artists. Was he a good salesman? I wouldn't categorize it as being a salesman. In the beginning, when I joined in 1963, we did commercials. We did a couple hundred commercials. That's where Jim got the money. We're about to show you the new specially designed Wilson's Meat television campaign. You mean all those crummy commercials we knocked together last? But first, we'd like to tell you about our organization. He always recognized that commerce and art were a dynamic duo. The attitude was, whatever he did, he would make sure he had fun doing it. Because the doing of it can be fun. Well, Hemingway once said, time is the only thing we have, and too little of that. So Jim Henson was a person who was very careful with his time and did not like to misuse it or waste it? Jim appreciated time and life. Maybe it's his brother dying early. I don't know. But he didn't do small talk. He always, his talk, most of the time, was about new, new things to do, new exciting ventures, and who could make those ventures come into being better. Frank, how much do you miss Jim Henson? <sighs> I still can't believe he's gone. Did you have a chance to say goodbye to him? Afterwards, I did. A great soul gone from us. Yeah. Yeah, like John Stone said, the service must be this cosmic mistake. The, the finger pointed at the wrong guy. Ta -da. 